nurses are still being involved in lawsuits. They still being arrested and they still being involved in depositions. Today, we're gonna to talk about a nurse that was recently arrested in regards to a fall that a patient sustained, okay? We're gonna be talking about that case. We're gonna be talking about fall prevention and we're gonna be talking about universal fall precautions. Universal fall precautions are not talked about, they're not spoken about, and they're not being educated on enough. We all know our universal precautions as far as preventing disease and spreading infection, but there are also universal fall precautions that you can use with a patient in any setting, whether you're a home health nurse, a ICU nurse, a ER nurse, if you're working in a long-term care facility, post-acute environment, uh, if you're working, I don't know, and, and if you have a loved one that you're even taking care of at home, there are universal fall precautions that we're going to talk about today. The first thing that I want to talk about, the first thing that I'm going to talk about is I don't care how cool you are with a nurse. I don't care how cool you are with a nursing assistant, okay? Don't you ever compromise your character or integrity by not reporting a fall. Don't do it. It's not worth it. As a nursing manager, I have had many, many, many CNAs, many um, LPNs, many RNs, all kind of lay staff pull up on me to let me know that XYZ nurse had a fall last night, had a fall two weeks ago that they never reported. Don't do it. Don't compromise your character and don't compromise your integrity. I know that we are busy, busy nurses. Some of these topics are very hard to come and present to you all because I know that the nurse and patient ratios are trash. They're trash, but we still need to protect ourselves and we still need to go home to our families, okay? We do not need to be caught up in these lawsuits and being arrested. Okay, most recently I learned of a nurse, I wanna say in Daytona, Michigan. Now, let me tell you something, not everything, not everything that nurses get caught up in has to do with nurse patient ratios, okay? I'm telling you now, some nurses are out here making some of their own decisions, okay? This is a nurse Taylor nurse, this is in Taylor, Michigan. A Taylor nurse is accused of falsifying medical records of a patient who fell and later died at a nursing home. We're gonna talk about these falsified documents. This nurse, 41 years old, is accused of falsifying neurological assessments for a patient who had previously suffered a fall in a facility and later died, okay? The Michigan Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs had requested the documents as part of on-site visit investigation for the fall and death, okay? Falsifying documents, falsifying neurological assessments. We all know that that is a part of what we do after a patient falls. We have to do neuro checks. We have a time frame. You need to be aware of how frequent. In most places now, you're doing ER, EMR charting. So once you pull that fall protocol, that fall pathway, it gives it to you. But you should be aware of that. The first neuro check in 15 minutes, for how many times? the next one in 30 minutes, the next one in an hour, and for the duration and how long that goes on, okay? We as licensed practical nurses and registered nurses are required to do neuro check assessments for our patients after they fall. It is not acceptable to falsify those documents. I don't know if you all are aware or remember another incident a couple years ago where a nurse also went to jail and was involved in a lawsuit in regards to a patient that fell as well. And as a result, they died. 
And that nurse, it was proven that that nurse did not do the neurological assessments on that patient. They had cameras in the facility and they were able to approve that. That patient died of a subdural hematoma. Okay, I wanna talk about some of the fall, the fall prevention measures that everybody should be involved in. As a nurse manager and assistant director of nursing, I had everybody involved in falls. It was a part of my job. It was one of my main duties was to prevent falls. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the four P's approach. The four P's approach. When you are in the presence of your patient, you should be assessing their pain. Are you in pain? Do you have any discomfort? Pain is a major reason that patients fall, okay? The next one is positioning. Are they properly positioned in the bed? Uh, is the bed properly positioned itself, okay? Placement. Do we have things that they normally use? Their cell phones, the uh, facility or hospital phone, their eyeglasses, Kleenex, things like that. Some patients have over-the-counter meds like eye drops or allergy uh, meds that they're allowed to keep at the bedside. Are those things near them? If a patient is allowed to walk with an assistive device, do we have it tucked over in the corner or is it near and accessible to the patient? The personal needs of the patient. Are they hungry? Do they have to go to the restroom? Do they have to be toileted? Those are things, those are main, main things. And we call it the four P approach. Pain, position, placement, and personal needs. Those four things can greatly prevent falls. When I was a nurse, when I was a shift manager, when I was a clinical manager, and when I worked as a director of nursing, as an assistant director of nursing, I had everybody involved. The housekeeper, environmental service, you name it, and you was gonna be involved in falls. I would let my housekeepers know, if you go in the room and if you find this out of place, if you find the bed, don't, one thing you definitely have to do with housekeepers and environmental services, okay, is you have to remind them not to leave beds in high positions when they are in there providing of uh, the care and cleaning services for the rooms. Because a lot of times we have a lot of independent patients and they will come back to the room and they will attempt to get in those beds. That's how a lot of falls happen. Patients trying to get in bed as well as get out of bed when beds are in the wrong positions. So that is something that I greatly, greatly um, enforce with my housekeepers environmental services, okay? To put them beds back in the lowest position. The next thing that I did as a nurse, shift manager, supervisor, all of that, is that I made sure that my staff was aware of who was a fall risk. And as nurses, you should also be getting that information in nursing report, and you should be passing it on to the next clinician. Everybody on that unit, and it wasn't just that I let the person who was taking care of the patient know, I let everybody on the unit know because people have to take lunch and people have to take breaks. Everybody needs to be aware of fall risk patients. Don't take it lightly when we're doing those assessments for admissions and things like that. That's the first indicator. So that's the first time that the scoring system is going to alert you other than when you receive a nursing report other than your general assessment or things that family members are sharing with you, with you. That thing should be put on a 24 hour report and communicated to the nurse, next nurse. Also, if a patient falls during your shift or if a patient is on fall charting itself, it should be communicated. Let it stand out. Let's help each one other out, okay? The next thing that I did was, I let everybody know, ain't nobody falling today. Mm -mm. Not on my show, not on my watch, not on my weekend. When I worked and I was a manager, if it was my, if I was a supervisor, if I was on call as a manager, I let the staff know nobody falling this weekend. It's not nobody's gonna call me and tell me that nobody fell. No, I'm not coming here Monday and found out we got a fall. And you don't know what little things like that will do. People will band together. People would band together and do things, 
okay? The next thing that I wanna encourage you is especially nurses, especially nurses. In most cases, we, we know some CNAs is bringing in bank because they know how to make it, okay? But I would bring in treats for my staff. Keep the staff morale up. Let's not make everything be on management side because we already know they ain't gonna do, they gonna do what they gonna do and they not gonna do because it's all trickling down from a corporate level, okay? But keep the morale up. It's nothing wrong with buying pizza every other month, taking turns or different things like that, bringing in coffee, bringing in donuts, asking somebody how their day was. The more the morale is up on the staff amongst the clinicians, amongst the healthcare providers themselves, that greatly helps decrease falls because everybody looking out for each other. We working as a team and teamwork truly does make the dream work. Okay, I wanna get into some of the universal precautions. Some of them I've already stated, but I have a list of them that I always, it was every, we, listen, it was printed everywhere in buildings that I work with. If I was a part of that management team and I was responsible for reporting them falls to corporate or reporting them to family members, mm, this was being talked about, okay? Especially on a mission, especially on a mission, a change in environment really greatly increases the risk of a person falling. A person being in a hospital, being in a nursing home, a stiff, a sniff, a long-term care environment, being out of your norm. Great, Even myself, even myself, when we travel and go out of town, you can wake up a little confused and disorientated in hotels and on cruises and different things like that. So just imagine what's going on with your 83, 84-year-old patient when they wake up in new environments, okay? A change in their health status. Nurses, any change in a patient's health status we should be paying attention to that because it could greatly increase falls. A change in their medications. Also, that's something uh, that we also want to review if a patient falls. A change in medication can increase a fall as well as if they fall, that is something that we should be looking into. Your pharmacies, you know, call a pharmacy and ask them which one of these can increase fall and tell a supervisor, get somebody to do it. Get somebody to do it, okay? Uh, and if they have a history of fall or a new fall, a history of fall or a new fall. Now, some of the universal precautions, like we already said, we want to orientate them to their surroundings, how to use the things in their room, how to use the bed, how to use the call light, different things like that, where the bathroom is. We want to orientate them to that. We want to place the frequently used things, items, eyeglasses, Kleenex, like I said earlier, in reach and accessible. I'm just looking down at my notes because I don't want to forget nothing from y'all. Encourage them to call for assistance. Tell them, Miss so and so, so and so, if you need something, put in your call light. Also, let's answer call lights. Let's not leave it all up. And I'm not coming down on you all, but we got to get this, okay? Let's not leave it up to somebody else to do it. Let's stop walking past call lights. Let's stop. Because that will discourage a patient that somebody is going to come and assist me. I know, I know, I know that nurse and staff patient ratios, again, are trash. But let's start taking care of people as if they were our loved ones, okay? Are their eyeglasses cleaned and accessible? Proper fitting footwear. They have those gripper socks on, but are they too big? They um, have on shoes, but are they too big? A lot of times, especially in long-term care environments, I've seen patients not have proper fitting shoes. We will provide those things for you. So bring that to somebody's attention, okay? Keeping the room free of clutter. Removing excess and unused equipment. Excess and unused equipment has been involved in many, many falls. I've known patients to try to grab hold to IV poles to break their fall and wind up falling and having a greater injury because the, and, and the, the antibiotic therapy was over with. The IV therapy was over with. So get when you're doing your rounds, as you should be doing, when you're doing your rounds, make sure that if equipment is not being used anymore, remove that from your rooms, okay? 
keeping the bed in the lowest position unless it's not practical. If it's an ICU patient or if it's a specialty bed or something like that, sometimes it's not practical. But when it is, let's do it, okay? Making sure that we're securing the bed and making sure it's locked in a locked position because the movement, even one break being off, can cause a patient that's trying to get out of the bed to fall. Uh, stretchers as well, when your patients are being transferred, their wheelchairs should be locked when they're just sitting. Because a lot of patients, especially older geriatric patients, patients with dementia or anything will rock. And I've seen people literally rock so much until they come forward and uh, begin to slide out of chairs. Adequate lighting in the rooms, especially at night, we need adequate lighting in the room. And providing care, providing education to patients, to family members, and to, like I said, all of the staff. The social worker, everybody should be looking out for stuff. The other thing that I want to talk about when it comes to falls is doing rounds, alternate rounds. Nurses, if you know that you're going to be doing med pass, then alternate rounds with your CNAs, with your nurses' assistants. You take the odd hours, I take the even hours. That was a common thing that we did in many facilities that we worked on. And check it, spot check and make sure it's done. And it's nothing wrong with saying, hey, it's all about our attitude and how we approach people sometimes, okay? Sometimes we're not gonna never approach some of these people right. And I do understand that. But like I said, we're doing what we can to increase staff morale amongst each other, okay? Another thing, Patients should not be sitting on pillows, on regular pillows, okay? They have wheelchair mats. They should not be sitting on pillows. Pillows greatly increase the risk of falls because the pillowcase can cause slippage. A patient can reach for something and fall forward, okay? I just wanted to get this out here. I posted a video a few weeks ago about lawsuits and different things like that. I plan on breaking that entire video down. I started off with falls because the falls are the number one risk. They're the number one reason that nurses are being involved in lawsuits. They're one of the number one reasons in many, many states. It's said that at some point, almost every patient that is living in a long-term care environment will fall at some point during the time that we take care of them. It's also said that up to 20% of those patients will get, uh, sustain a hip fracture and die the following year. The following year. Wanted to get this out there. Let me know in the comments if anything you have to add to the conversation. Let's talk about it and let's get this information out there. We are making nursing great again. We are making nursing great again.